Hello, and welcome back to my series on building a square drop trailer. In the last video, we were able to get the frame painted and the trailer lights installed and working. And in this video, we plan on finishing the underside of the trailer by building a custom skid plate that protects the water tank and the battery bay. And here you can see me reinstalling those on the freshly painted frame. And if you're curious on how I built these, go ahead and watch the fourth video in this build series, and you'll see step by step on how I did it. The first step in building the custom skid plate is to take careful measurements for the CAD drawing. And then I transferred these measurements onto a large sheet of cardboard and then made the proper cuts where needed. And then I also transferred the measurements onto the cardboard to determine where it needed to be folded. And after cutting it and folding it in many places, I was able to create a cardboard template of how I want the final skid plate to look. It's hooked up nicely to the frame, allows the most ground clearance as possible, symmetrical from left to right, and it should help protect the water tank and the custom battery bank from rock chips and other road debris. Cutting and folding cardboard is pretty easy. Now the more difficult job begins on cutting and folding this aluminum sheet. And for this, I'm using a 16 inch thick sheet of floor plate, more commonly known as aluminum diamond plate. And folding the sheet is gonna be a challenge. There are many variations of sheet metal breaks that are designed to fold the sheet just like this, but they all have one thing in common, a hefty price tag. And then I found this design on Amazon. I didn't purchase the brake. Instead, I decided I could probably build it myself. After all, it looks like it's just two pieces of angle iron. The rear piece of angle iron has a clamp that holds the workpiece onto it. And the front piece of angle iron has hinges that bend and help bend the material. And since this series is on building a square drop trailer and not building a metal brake, then cue the royalty free music and we'll quickly get through this. And now here's the finished product. It clamps into a vise, so no legs are required. The handle is designed to fold down nicely for storage and transporting. And it also extends nicely for when it's time to fold the metal. And now the big moment begins, bending the first piece of sheet metal. The piece of scrap metal gets carefully lined up within the brake, and then the clamp gets tightened down on both sides and now the moment of truth. That's all right, everything is fixable. What it really needs is a little more force from underneath and a lot more clamping force pushing straight down. So let's get to fixing it.
using that same piece of scrap metal. And now for the second moment of truth, but this time with the clamping force pushing straight down in the middle. Success! I think we got it. Huh. It's not bad for steel. Not bad for steel. It's a little more rounded than I would like, but it's not bad for steel, and it should be a much tighter bend when it comes to aluminum. It should be good for aluminum. Well, if you stuck with me for the last six minutes, all that work was just to get to this point. Time to start building the skid plate. I transferred all the measurements from the cardboard onto the sheet of aluminum. I marked each bend and the degrees on which it gets folded to, and I also marked each cut, and it cuts just the same as any piece of plywood. And now we're ready for our first official bend, and to see if the DIY brake can handle the job large sheet of aluminum was a little bit awkward to move around with just one person. It's pretty lightweight, it's just the large size of it made it a little bit difficult to line it up within the brake. It was just a matter of going back and forth, back and forth, making sure it lines up with the correct line and making sure it's clamped down tightly. Okay. And now it's time for the first official bend. Oh boy, I hope it's working. Boy, I hope it's working. Ugh. Yep, it's working. First Ben went great, but it would be nice to have an extra set of hands, and my father-in-law was kind enough to come on over. Despite the grunty noises, the second Ben went much easier having that second set of hands. And setting up for the third bend also went pretty smooth. The only thing different about this third bend is it doesn't get bent at 90 degrees. It gets bent to about 39 degrees was the measurement that I took off the cardboard template. I ended up making a template out of some green tag board. I just took a protractor, measured it out to 39 degree angle, and then cut it out. And I used this to visualize if I had the bend at about the right angle. And then I ran into some problems on my last bend. The DIY brake doesn't allow it to fit in there once the other sides are folded up. Uh, son of a gun. So we ended up improvising with the two of us. We decided just to put a piece of flat stock instead of the top clamp that's positioned on the DIY brake. We also had to cut the skid plate just about three, four inches on each side of where the sharp angles are. That allowed us to bend them in by hand. And then later when it was folded, we were able to straighten them out by hand also. You don't have any clamps that reach in that thing, so. I knew there would be an issue with the flat stock bending, and since I didn't have any clamps, and I couldn't find any volunteers to stand on it, Not me. <laughs> so we decided to use a VFH. 
He used the big orange hammer against the flat stock, which eventually formed a crease in the aluminum, and we were able to bend it to the right angle. And that was the last major bend. So I'd like to say thanks for stopping over and helping out. And later that evening, another friend stopped over to help take off the cardboard. I'm gonna take off the cardboard. And this was clearly a two-person job. <laughs> Besides having a good time, our main goal tonight is to get all the final trimmings done around the skid plate. I should also mention that my wife is in charge of the camera tonight. Bend and snap. Trace the cardboard onto the metal and then did some final trimmings. Yeah. It's <laughs> really, you're really good videographer. What this part of the project required was a lot of repetitive action of putting up the skid plate and taking it back down. Making small little marks every time and then making small little trims every time. Kiss the pythons. we knew it, all the small cuts were done. I think we can all agree that it looks dead sexy, but the main question is, how are we going to fasten the big boy to the bad boy? It looks dead sexy. How are you gonna fasten the big boy, this bad boy? And to answer that question, I'm going pretty simple. I'm gonna build some simple little brackets in the front made out of some angle iron. I drilled and tapped some holes through them. What I'll end up doing is bolting them to the sheet metal first, and then I'll weld them in place. And on the sides, I'm just using some simple self-tapping screws. And last but not least, some minor trimming where it sticks above the deck of the trailer. I present a piece of metal with cinematic music. Stay tuned for the next video when we start working on the body of the trailer. I lift things without grunting, and people say wow. wow.